Hello, come with me while I take you on a tour of my woodland garden and show you what is blooming here in Northern Virginia in Zone 7A. Here you have the non-native wood anemones. They are in full bloom and are just about to go over. They're really pretty, they're just not native. And then intermixed and to the side of those are the golden alexanders. I talk a lot about golden alexanders, right? And these ones over here, I think because maybe it's a little shadier, these guys bloom a little later. So what's happening now is they're emerging and the jack and the pulpits are emerging. So this is the pulpit here and that's the jack and they will take over this whole bed and in addition to those we'll have the may apples here that are uh, have just started coming up this week these are the may apples this is actually the apple so long about may 1st that will turn into a little white flower you know similar to that one and then it'll turn into the big hard seed and the box turtles are supposed to love the mayapples i'm still waiting for the or i don't know if they're box turtles but the turtles are supposed to love the mayapples and i am still waiting for them to find them in my yard Also, we have a little bit of phlox here on the edge. Here's some sensitive fern stalks. Those will start coming up. I really think they're too big for where they are, but we'll see. And then I'm going to turn to my right. The Christmas fern fiddleheads are popping out and looking beautiful and just um, otherworldly they're so neat and this area is green and gold mixed with I think this is sweet woodruff it is not native and it's pretty aggressive and it just I just so happen to inherit it so I pull it out when I can otherwise I just let it go You leaving? Oh, okay. What are you doing? <laughs> With your backpack? Oh shoot. Okay. Let's see. Coming down a little further, this whole area is whitewood aster, and the whitewood asters are really starting to get going. And what I really love about the whitewood aster is that the older they get, they have like purple stem and purple veining on the back of their leaves so it's pretty it's pretty cool and this here is a support for coral honeysuckle and virgin's bower here is my red bud that I grew from just a tiny little twig soon the leaves will become their full size and the leaf miner bees will come and just take beautiful circle half moon um, cuts out of the leaves and just it just adds to the the beauty of the red bud here's some non-native astilbe and then my witch hazel which actually has leaves on it this year this um the way i've staked this witch hazel seems to have kept the deer off of it this year so what i did is i just um, circled it with whatever wire that is. And then I've been um, pulling it up higher as the witch hazel has grown taller. So it looks like that's really worked this year. Okay, going over to my left again, you see more of the May apples. And then this patch will be spiderwort. There's some coming out now. Those yellow leaves are spiderwort. There's a shrubby St. John's wort and then some trillium up front, but I'll take you around to see that. <clears throat> this whole area here will be 
full of greenery um, in a couple months this this area um, gets green later than some of the front areas and I think that's just because of the different plants that I use and I'll show you we have some goat's beard that is leafing out and goat's beard is like the native version of a stilby and supposedly goat's beard is supposed to be pretty aggressive and I don't find that to be the case in my yard I remember buying a goat's beard at a native plant nursery and someone says oh you're gonna have that everywhere well I don't um, and it's hard to keep the deer off of it but doesn't look like much now but it will soon okay I'm gonna go to the front of the garden the other side actually just to show you my trilliums Here are the trilliums. I inherited these and I just have this tiny little patch and I've had this tiny little patch for like five years and um, I just wish it would grow. <laughs> but anyway, here's more of the spider warts that I was telling you about. I'm gonna get back on the path here. So this, there's a path here that leads you out to the yard and over here there will be ferns and jack in the pulpits. Here's the jack in the pulpits. And then on this side, I have Philadelphia fleabane. I think that's what it is anyway. And Pucara americana, the straight species. And then um, some Carex. Walking up the path further, there's the green and gold that's starting to grow up a little bit the green and gold stays like it's pretty much evergreen but it but it re recedes a little bit into the into the ground over the winter next to the green and gold this is a patch of whitewood aster behind it is the allegheny pachysandra and in front of it is the native ginger which the deer eat the deer eat a lot of this. The, um, the white wood aster actually, I don't mind it getting nibbled too much because it doesn't bloom until late so it's able to recover. The, the ginger, that's um, much different. It, it's, it, it really damages the plant when they eat it because the leaves really don't come back. Here, just, here are some sprouts of the Allegheny Pachysandra, what I, th I think they're so cool, kind of like the fiddleheads on the Christmas fern where they look like otherworldly. And there we have Solomon seal or false Solomon seal. I'll post on the, I'll, I'll throw up something on the screen. Uh, I always forget if the native is a false Solomon seal or if it's the regular Solomon, regular Solomon seal. So more Solomon seal and native gingers in here as well i have christmas fern and more allegheny pachysandra and in this bed i keep putting more and more ground covers in here because because the jack and the pulpits that you see popping up everywhere those are ephemerals so in this area that i was showing you there are a ton of jack in the pulpits and the jack in the pulpits are great. The only problem is, is they're ephemeral. So by mid July, they're looking ratty and dying back. And so when they die back, there's nothing there. So I've been trying to put a lot of ground covers. So Christmas fern, Carex's, Allegheny Pachysandra there so that I have a carpet of green when they die back. So I'm really excited to see this year if what I did last year helped. Maybe the I did a lot of root cuttings and things like that, so it might not be the effect that I'm hoping for, but we'll see. Okay, further down the path here, here's a single epimedium that I purchased before I got into natives, and it has basically stayed there and has done nothing. So it hasn't taken over anything, so that's fine. And then there's a Brunner that I am moving up front. On the other side of the path is, this is like a hellebore patch, and I have the native Virginia strawberry as ground cover. 
and in the shade it does not spread nearly as fast as it does in the sun just a fyi and then i have a patch of golden golden ragwort moving over to the left oh i didn't even see this okay so in here these are brand new bluebells that i put in last year and they're blooming that's awesome and this is carex springali which is native a little further north and then there is a lot of white wood aster and some allegheny pachysandra so this is a brand new bed from last year that i put in and it looks like things are coming up so that's great and all those things will spread all those plants will spread and eventually it will um, be as full as the front of the garden back to the left this area is lady fern and hookah americana which is slowly coming out there's the lady ferns they'll get the lady fern will get about two and a half to three feet tall actually that might be tiarella i'm not really 100 percent and then here i have i inherited these primulas i think that's what they're called from the previous owner i've just been separating them making a little patch they're really really pretty and they don't seem to be too aggressive i'm considering putting them in pots on the deck because the the deer do get to them and i could replace it with something native now we're going to move into a much newer section of the woodland garden and i was mulching the paths and this is where i ended i need to get a new chipdrop.com so there's a little path here that goes out to the yard and then i have a red bud uh right here oh you know what i need to check on my persimmon that i planted i want to see if we're getting any buds or anything i don't know what do you think planted three of those we'll see okay so around the red bud down the path I have an area here. This whole area will be, I think it's hay scented fern, and I have um, a couple native trees that I put in over here. This is a, I didn't put this in, but this is a devil's walking stick. And then if you've seen my other, if you have watched my other videos, here's a fringe tree and you can see it's starting to come alive. This is like the only spice bush that's done well in my yard. And then here we have a service berry. And then I have another fringe tree here, which is starting to come alive as well. And I want to get a third fringe tree just, you know, from the perspective of always planting in odd numbers. So I have Put a few white wood asters around in here to self seed and then this whole area is the hay scented fern so this area here completely transforms this area i'm waiting for it to green up with the white wood aster <clears throat> okay and then now this bed right here on this side of the kusa dogwood is just mainly carexes and hookahs and lady fern Things are still coming alive in this section. This little area here is a lot of lyre leaf sage and woodland grasses. So this is lyre leaf sage. I absolutely love it. It's a great self seeder. And then this is wood reed grass. So I'm really loving the combination of the lyre leaf sage and the wood reed grass. So that starts like here and comes down this way. This is the dry creek bed that weaves up there. And then here is the Virginia water leaf, which is getting bigger. This is supposed to spread really fast. I hope so, because I want it to take over this area. So the lyre leaf sage comes around here and then I have the Virginia water leaf coming down here. Then transitioning into this area, I have Carex Sprengali and Carex Rosia or Radiata and then Tiarellas. And then I also filled in this area with 
rooted tiarellas or root cutting tiarellas because the water was coming down and washing it all out. The only tiarellas that were surviving were down here. So I'm thinking because of the, the dry creek bed is doing its job, um, I'm hoping that the tiarellas are able to survive now and not get washed out from um, the water. So moving on to the burr garden, the golden ragworts are really starting to come into bloom. And um, I believe I've showed you before that the little buds start out as like this jewel tone purple, and then they go over to like a yellow daisy like. So let me just see if I can get in there. Once the things start growing in the bird garden, it gets hard to get in there, but let me see if I can get in there and um, give you a close up of how that looks because there's so many of the golden ragworts. And, I just love that option as a ground cover and a ground cover to battle against the invasives because it spreads really, really well. Here's my rigged up deer protection because they, for the wood or for the bird garden because the deer actually found a way to get into my door that I thought was hidden. Really wasn't hidden as well as I thought it was. It's like deer fencing and clothes pins, and then I had to put in bamboo stakes okay so oh here's a good example so here you'll see the um, the purple there's one right there the purple um, buds and then they start going over to these beautiful daisy like flowers and so you'll see this whole area it's not in full bloom yet so it's hard to see but it will be covered in yellow pretty soon here and then when those flowers go over, they have dandelion type seeds. And so then it'll all look like white cotton. So here in the bird garden, we also have my straight species, nine bark and the elderberries are getting large and in charge. Oh, you know what? I do want to go check on my, it's hard to get through here. I want to check on my, well, here's a patch of jewelry here. Wow, that's going to be pretty thick. Oh, here's some ostrich fern that's looking good. All this is golden ragwort. All that's jewelweed. So this is going to look, this is probably going to look pretty good in a naturalistic way because I have all these plants kind of in swales or swaths. But anyways, I'm taking you up to my brand new Chicksaw Plum. If I can get through the jungle. Here we go. Oh yeah, there's life. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This I purchased this as a five to six foot bear, bear root from Thai Thai Farms on Etsy. And then behind my Chicksaw Plum, these are um, the high bush blueberries. Okay, so now I'm gonna try and get out of here. We got viburnums around me. And then this is some coral honeysuckle. Here's that view of the golden ragwort from the opposite direction. Girl. Say hi, Faye. <laughs> this is my sister in law, Faye. <laughs> Looks great out here. <laughs> Thank you. Here are the elderberries. Looking beautiful. This whole patch here is woodland sunflower. So that just started to emerge since my last video as well. And I was talking about um, goat's beard. Here's some goat's beard. I have goat's beard kind of like plopped through this area. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of the bird garden now. So that's where I came out of the bird garden. And now I'm coming up a path to the yard. We turn around. This path is lined with Carex flaccosperma. Right over here, now I'm looking, so just for reference, I'm now I'm looking down into the woods where before I was looking up to the house. So this is the top of the Dry Creek Riverbed, and then to the right is um, a new bed. I pulled this out last year, and I have more of that Philadelphia fleabane. This is a tick seed, I believe. And then I have um, this new sedge that I'm really excited about. I can't remember the name, but I'll put it up on the screen. Um, so I have that. And then here is gonna be obedient plant. This is a really wet area.
I don't remember what that is. We'll have to see when it comes up. Here's an area of phlox. And then here's more golden ragwort that I'm hoping comes down and around here. And then I have a shrubby St. John's wort. So this is that bed from the opposite direction and how it looks now in the middle of April. Now we'll walk down the path through the woodland and then I have this area here which is lined with Carex Amphibola and then in the bed behind it I have Golden Alexanders and Goat's Beard that the deer eat and then I'm trying to start a patch of Virginia Bluebells. I also have Royal Fern in here and it's starting to come up. Behind that is more Carex's and another hellebore patch. This is the area that I'm going to find something to put in between all these Carex's. Walking, if I go walk down that path, that goes up to the yard, up to the cutting garden. And then next to that path, this is the pawpaw patch. Someone had asked me if I had pawpaws and I do. And these are the three, my three um, best ones. I have pawpaws that go down in the woodland that don't do so well, they don't get as much sun, but that is a, a non-native tree. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna cut that down and then uh, see if that can give some more light to the pawpaws. But let me turn back around here. Oh, here's a, another devil's walking stick. I just think these are really cool. Like you don't, you don't want to hold that. But the pollinators, if you want a pollinator magnet, when these guys bloom, the pollinators swarm to it, like literally swarm to it. So in this main pawpaw patch, I have golden alexanders. And then those are all woodland sunflowers and lady fern. So that's what the ground cover is. And then whatever, whatever Carex this is, it's not Carex flaccus firma. It was supposed to be and it's not. So here's probably, here's one pawpaw. And then we'll go over to my biggest one because I think I saw some, oh yeah, we have blooms. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Here are the blooms. I don't know if you can see it real well on the pawpaw, so many this year. So this one has been blooming for two years. This guy I was hoping was gonna bloom last year so that I could try and get fruit and it didn't bloom. So I'm still not seeing any blooms on it, which really chaps my you know what, but just cross your fingers that I get blooms there. Lined the beds lined with Carex flaccosperma. Here's the hellebore patch intermixed with um, Carex's. There's the other side of the bird garden. I'll have some cinnamon fern coming up here soon, just slightly behind the fence. Okay, so I'm gonna take you up to the top of the yard just to give you a view of the woodland like a cutback view of the woodland so that's where i took you into this comes down this is um where i have all the anemones right now which will be the jack and the pulpits there's a little wildlife area with the pond and then let's see there's the dry creek bed, the bird garden, the pawpaw patch, and the trampoline. So that's it for now. I am gonna have a part two, I think, don't quote me on that, of this woodland garden tour so I can show you the other side of the backyard. Um, if I do, I will just name that part two. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing, liking, or sharing with your gardening friends. Thank you so much, and I will see you again next time.